What y'all listening to? Lime Light Highlight Podcast. Welcome back to the show, Your Positive Podcast. Safe space and great place for a positive outlook on life. We're back at it again. And as you know, I got a new dog. And I've been trying to get my cats to get used to her. And It's been kind of a little bit of a challenge, but at least we can all be in the same room at the same time without them freaking out and trying to kill each other now, for the most part. Uh, if, you got, if you guys got any uh, useful tips or advice on how to get my animals to get along, let me know. I know I can read online about everybody's experience, but, you know, it's a little more real when somebody tells you themselves or that you know. Um, other than that, no real updates. I, uh, I completely spaced on the fact that Mother's Day was this past weekend. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. And uh, I was actually pretty excited because I got to gift my mom and my mother-in-law both trees from Treatum. If you recall from a few episodes ago we covered the not I wouldn't say they're nonprofit, but that amazing organization called Treatum as our uh, limelight PPDPT before we actually had the PPDPT segment um, and just for those who haven't been caught up or don't know what I'm talking about there the people who plant a tree that helps women farmers and farmers with both a suit a source of food as well as an additional income depending on what type of tree you purchase um, a lot of them are in Africa in different parts and the website was user was very user friendly and it didn't just have like trees to give out for Mother's Day. It had like any any day you can sponsor a tree yourself if you really feel generous in buying stuff like that. I mean, any meaningful gift for any occasion It'll have you feeling good as well as helping out the planet and a person in Africa. So check out that website, free, uh, treat them, and uh, get yourself or a loved one a tree that you can name and keep keep up to date on how it's growing and where it's going to be planted. So, yeah, what else? Um, well, the country is slowly opening up in different phases, which is good, as long as we don't get another wave of people getting infected. But knock on wood, hopefully everything works out. But today we have three very good news stories that I think will keep you entertained and hopeful throughout this week. Uh, We'll be covering what a gym is doing to help addicts around the world, how whales are benefiting Iceland due to the virus, and and an amazing inspiring story of how a new mother meets her baby after battling the virus. And of course, we got some uh, interesting weird facts coming to you first, and our Limelight PPDPT segment so overall pack show so be sure to tune in next week because i got some very interesting and cool news to share that i just recently learned but for now let's focus on today's show this week's unrelated fun fact is about bullfrogs um for the most before we get too deep into that for the most part sleep is a pretty essential and damn near every living being sleeps it's essential and a very important part of how we repair our muscles to giving our brains a much needed break in different parts of the bodies. Rest is a big, it's a big thing for most of the part, for most of the world, we don't get enough rest, but bullfrogs, they're one of the very few animals that get absolutely zero sleep and like they need zero sleep, like literally none at all. And the reason for this is that bullfrogs seem to not, they don't fully fulfill the sensory threshold criteria of sleep during resting states. So they take rests, but not in the way we would consider sleep. And that's sufficient enough for them to continue to function, which is really, it's insane. What's cool about this is when they did the study on bullfrogs, they determined that it doesn't need sleep or it doesn't sleep because when they tested it for the responsiveness by being shocked like other animals, it had the same reaction whether it was awake or quote unquote resting. Um, and of course, this is all on the idea that most animals sleep by what we define as sleeping. You know, there is a debate out there whether or not our definition should be the consensus and if animals fall into that category. But overall, I think it's interesting that bullfrogs absolutely do not need what we would define as sleep. 
pretty interesting nonetheless, and they're not the only animals who have strange sleep patterns, but they are the only animals that truly need zero sleep. It's kind of scary and mind-blowing to know that these things are always awake, but an interesting piece of information nonetheless. So, enough of bullfrogs. Uh, Let's get on with today's show. All over America, as well, I'm sure, the world, there is a a pandemic that affects all families from the richest to the poorest, and I'm not talking about coronavirus. Substance abuse is a major cause in terrible health conditions, broken families, homelessness, mental health, and in many cases can result in death. I've I've had very close friends from high school and the military to family that have lost their lives to substance abuse either from overdosing on a drug to drinking themselves into a coma. Some looking for an escape to to the pressures of everyday life, to trying to, you know, rid their mind of a traumatic event that would sometimes lead to suicide. Life isn't easy and, you know, who are we to judge what other people go through? All we can do is be there for them and maybe give them a healthier alternative or outlet so that they can continue living one day at a time. Now, there are a lot of people who would argue that addiction is not a disease. It's more of a choice. I happen to believe that it is a disease for the simple fact that absolutely no one, regardless of what they choose to do with their body, has an innate desire to be physically addicted to a drug or substance to the point where if they do not have that so that said substance, they could literally die. Um, But we're not here to argue who's right or who's wrong. I hope I can say that if anything, We can all agree that addiction is definitely a problem that doesn't have a simple solution. Now, the Phoenix, the Phoenix is a free sober gym community that uses health and mental fitness. I'm sorry, health and fitness to help people overcome addiction. Many times people turn towards substance to take their minds off something terrible going on in their lives or just to have a different state of mind. But regardless of why people do what they do, another thing I think we can all agree on is that Exercise and fitness overall makes people feel better. It gets your blood flowing. It activates those endorphins that people really need. And unfortunately, due to the shutdown and shelter in place in many places, uh, many gyms have been forced to close. Pair that with the already lonely predicament of some recovering addicts finding themselves in leads to a very dangerous situation for some people. What I found interesting is the fact that there's an actual community that focuses on being active for those suffering from addiction. They usually cater to those trying to change their lives for the better by doing in-person activities and giving these people an opportunity to be, to be a part of something better. And because of the shutdown, the Phoenix has had to adjust and are continuing their work with meet groups online, similar to those of other gyms and other online businesses. And um, while it may not be as good or as effective as it is in person, uh, many of the members have found comfort in me in, in these online meetings. And what I really found positive is that Phoenix, the Phoenix, has also started welcoming so sober social media users from around the world as well. And I think this helps in quite a few ways, because if you've ever been to a gym or have happen to have a membership and uh You've gone constantly like you're an avid gym goer. You tend to see the same people and and build relationships with these people that you, you know, over time become friends with because you're constantly seeing them in the same space. The Phoenix welcoming sober social media users can show people who may not have had to deal with addiction or deal with people who have been addicted to substances, you know, and, and they see a different point of view for years that the the so-called war on drugs and media has used propaganda to have focused and they, they focus on complete negative aspects of drugs and and drug users and they associate them with criminals and and being bad people and i think bringing these these people you know sober social media users and and the people who are recovering addicts bringing them together 
people might start a conversation to show, you know, those suffering from addiction that it's just because some people were in a, in a bad place doesn't mean that they're bad people. These are conversations that I feel that they definitely need to be had and and they need a light sh- sh- shined on them because, you know, how, how nothing, nothing's black and white regardless of how many preconceived notions some others have. And I think that's a that's a step in the right direction, if you ask me. So I, I really like the fact that there's a, there's a group out there that I'm just finding out about now. It's called the Phoenix. They help recovering addicts by you know, getting their minds off of whatever they're recovering from and focusing more on their overall health, which is, is, is just overall a a much better thing if you ask me. So I want to shift gears and talk about some good wildlife news. Um, whales, who doesn't love whales? Whales are these beautiful ginormous creatures that live in the ocean, but, um, like so many lovely creatures in the wild, we have people who want to hunt them. Um, I guess this is a not a little known fact, but Japan likes to import Icelandic whale meat. And I'm sure you've heard about shark fin soup or even, you know, people hunting dolphins and whales and killing them for their meat, which is, I guess, a delicacy in some places. But uh, whales are reported to represent a very important species to the global oceanic ecosystem as well as have a huge role in fighting climate change, which is news to me. I didn't know that. And um, back in 19, 1986, an international moratorium against whaling was passed. And despite that, two Icelandic companies, Havlor and IP Ertgerd, they continued to hunt fin whales and mink whales. So they went against the international moratorium and they stayed in business. And which is bad, but good news for whales and the planet this year, the one company IP Utgard have been facing financial difficulties to the increased number of no fishing zones off of Iceland's coast. While the other whale hunting company Havlor is facing very stiff competition from Japanese whaling companies. So, you know, adding to that Japan's stricter measures on importing Icelandic whale meat and the pandemic going on right now, the market is really struggling to the point where they might be almost failing. And to add to all this good news about whales, this is the second straight year where there will be no whale hunting season in Iceland, which is two years in a row is pretty, pretty big deal. And um, mixing with the stricter laws and stiff competition from Japan, these whale hunting companies could be ending due to the financial reasons, which is a win-win for conservationists and the whales. And with only 3% of Icelandic citizens saying that they eat mink whale meat, there's only so much time Hovler and IP Ertgerd's companies can remain afloat. And to top it off, Japanese whale meat consumption dropped from 203,000 tons in 1965 to just 4,000 tons in 2015. Huge dramatic drop reducing the demand for whale meat and other things. And if you want to fast forward to 2019, the amount of whale hunting has only brought in 2000 tons. So we still got some more work to do, but people are moving in a better direction and the market for whale meat is decreasing. And I think that's a good enough thing to be highlighted and celebrated just a matter of time before it all ends. Now, our last story is a heart touching one and a nice quick one. So, like I said in the beginning of the show, I completely spaced on how fast Mother's Day came. So, this story is dedicated to all the mothers out there and to Mother's Day. This story takes place in Hackensack, New Jersey. A lady named Donna Molina was battling coronavirus and unfortunately fell into a coma. She had a 103 degree fever spike and was rushed to the hospital at the end of February. She was in an induced coma for 11 days and was on a ventilator, the whole shebang. It was very scary for anybody who's had to deal with this, I'm I'm sure. And to add to the scary part about the story, um, Donna was pregnant and her baby wasn't due until June 10th. So the baby was born actually April 2nd, four days after she went into a coma. Mind blowing. She had an emergency C-section, and after she recovered, she had to wait until she tested negative twice 
you know, for the virus before she could meet her new baby girl. But the baby.